top five things I want you to know if you are trying to get pregnant. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. So I'm a fertility doctor and every week I join you to talk about some tips about your fertility and your hormones so that you can understand your body better and be a better advocate for your own health and fertility. Today, I want to talk about five things and myths that people may not be aware of or that I want you to know before you start trying to get pregnant. So we're going to break those down quickly. Before we jump into it, just want to say a huge thanks for being here. Please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, leaving comments. We are getting some of our next video topics from the comments that you have left yourself. From here, I also want to say thank you so much to everybody who's pre-ordered my book, The Fertility Formula. It is coming out in just a couple months. The link below is available to you. And if you do order, you have a lot of pre-order bonuses, including modules, a book club, Q&A calls, and handouts, including the supplement guide and the IVF course. So that's a great resource for you. All right, well, let's dive into five things I want you to know if you're trying to get pregnant, breaking down some fertility mess. The first one is going to be that regular cycles means that your hormones are perfectly normal. The reality is having a regular cycle is a great sign if you're trying to get pregnant. Having a regular cycle means that your body is ovulating. However, one misconception is that ovulation is perfect if your cycles are regular. And this misconception is so construed that many doctors simply just ask, are your cycles regular? If you say yes, they move on. They don't do anything else. Well, understanding what's happening in your ovary is really key here. So in a quick minute, inside your ovary, you have a group of eggs inside the vault. I always like to imagine a group of eggs released from the vault every month. Each egg grows inside a follicle. Your brain is going to send out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone at the start of the month. FSH is going to get one of these follicles or eggs to grow into mature. As that egg grows, it makes more estrogen. Estrogen grows the lining, makes you feel good, talks back to your brain. This is the cue for your body to ovulate, and you're going to have an LH surge then released from the brain. This allows the follicle to rupture, the egg to be released, and then the follicle will reform and become the corpus luteum, which makes progesterone in the luteal phase. Well, ovulation disorders have a spectrum. So a few things that we see can be abnormalities in just the luteal or the follicular phases that can represent an underlying abnormality. And if you don't know when you ovulate, in reference to your cycle, you actually don't know how long is your luteal phase, how long is your follicular phase. Could these be signs of something wrong with your thyroid, prolactin, your ovarian reserve? Could this be luteal phase issues? So I think that this is an important thing, that it's more important that you understand when you're tracking your cycle, what's your follicular, what's your luteal phase versus just When's my cycle day number one? Number two, male factor is half of the story. There is this idea that so much blame comes to women. I know if you're trying to get pregnant, women carry so much the burden of this, but 50% of infertility is due to male factors. I think it is unacceptable in today's world that we make you try to get pregnant for a year before we even check a semen analysis. So in my perfect world, you would get a semen analysis before or at the very beginning of trying to get pregnant. It is very easy to check a semen analysis. You can ask your OBGYN. You can go to a fertility clinic. There are mail-in options that are very easy to use. So I think that this is something that you are able to to really evaluate a lot sooner. In addition to this, I see women doing everything right and trying to really improve their fertility and understand it. And their partner is doing everything wrong, meaning fertility is a team sport. I really want two people to come to the table together because a seam analysis is the start of it. But the sperm lifespan, only 90 days. So sperm are made over 72 days in the testes. This is when they grow, develop, package DNA. And then it takes about 18 days to get out the ejaculatory system. So lifestyle changes can make a huge difference in men, both positively and negatively. And that brings me to number three, which is inflammation hijacks your fertility. This is something that I think we are seeing renewed attention to across all of medicine. People who are telling you that there's nothing you can do to improve your fertility or that inflammation is a buzzword. They're gaslighting you and they don't care about you because the reality is we live in a chronic inflammatory world and you have to take active steps to decrease your inflammation. Chronic inflammation is harmful. Yes, the inflammatory system is a part of your immune system and the acute inflammatory response is really important in your body. That means if you get a cut, acute inflammation is going to come in and heal it. However, that system shouldn't be constantly turned on. This is complex and nuanced because ovulation, when that follicle ruptures, 
requires inflammation. And even the implantation process requires a level of inflammation. So it's not as simple as just cut out all inflammation, but we have to understand acute versus chronic is really different. Things associated with chronic inflammation include an abnormal gut microbiome, increased gut permeability, insulin resistance, and these things impact directly the levels of inflammation in your body, how your brain interprets hormone signals, how your brain sends out hormone signals, and then also the quality of the eggs in the sperm. So for both men and both women, eggs and sperm live inside your body. It is wild to me that we're going to sit here and think that the environment of your body doesn't impact your fertility. Yes, people can get pregnant and do all kinds of crazy things. But if you ask, what can I do to improve my fertility? Understanding that lifestyle is not extra, but it's foundational is going to be a key. In my perfect world, not only do we test our fertility before we start getting pregnant, we also try to optimize what we can. So what does this mean? We want to reduce chronic inflammation and insulin resistance. This is going to be by eating anti-inflammatory foods, high in fiber, very plant-forward meals. This is going to be avoiding toxins, both environmental and behavioral, things like marijuana, alcohol, nicotine. It's going to be supplementing what we need if we don't get it from diet. Think omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D. It's also going to mean creating a core foundation for your day, managing stress, getting enough sleep. That's my number one thing. And then also building muscle. Your skeletal muscle allows you to utilize and process glucose, fighting insulin resistance in a very active way. Number four is going to be waiting too long to get help or believing that you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can seek help. The definition of infertility is trying to get pregnant for 12 months without having success. If you're under age 35, that is the conventional time when you should get a fertility evaluation. However, in a world where infertility rates are rising, when I first became a fertility doctor over 10 years ago, we used to say one out of eight couples had infertility. Now in the United States, it's one out of every five couples who's trying for the first time. As infertility rises, as women are waiting longer to get pregnant because they're chasing incredible dreams, this is out dated advice, in my opinion, meaning you can wait that long. Many people will get pregnant, but if you want to be more proactive, knowing your AMH, how many eggs you have, knowing your anatomy, how many follicles you have, are your tubes and uterus normal, and knowing a semen analysis is going to be key in addition to starting to track your cycle earlier. And again, tracking your cycle means looking at cervical mucus monitoring, basal body temperature, or urinary-based hormones. Any of these are all appropriate, but understanding what's actually happening versus just when you're bleeding. And then number five is going to be not understanding that the luteal phase is so important and that ovulation dysfunction is a spectrum. So the luteal phase has a lot of misinformation online, and I'm going to sit here and say, I love the luteal phase. I'm an expert in it. I published all my fellowship research in luteal phase. To become a fertility doctor, you have to do a year and a half of research, publish a thesis project, and for your boards, which are both written and oral, you have to sit and defend this. You have to know everything about a topic. And most people pick some tiny aspect of IVF because it's easier to control or modify. And they do some basic science project or lab project. But I did natural fertility or fecundability, probability of getting pregnant every month. And my thesis was all on the luteal phase. The luteal phase is nuanced. I mean, there's no single blood test. If somebody says you should check your progesterone and it needs to be higher than 10 to have a good luteal phase, they are misconstruing what happens in the luteal phase. In the luteal phase, you have a corpus luteum making progesterone at the signal from the brain. LH is released from the brain in pulses. This tells the corpus luteum to make progesterone in pulses. So progesterone naturally is going to fluctuate in the luteal phase. It should be anywhere from three to 40 nanograms per ml. So it should be high. However, what should not be happening is that you get a progesterone level, it is nine, somebody says your luteal phase is not good, and they put you on progesterone every day. The other thing is that luteal phase dysfunction is real, and we know that it can impact your ability to get pregnant, especially in subsequent months. So what we want to know is why is your luteal phase abnormal? Luteal phase deficiency is a clinical diagnosis by either a short luteal phase of 11 days or less or having spotting in the luteal phase. This could be from abnormal ovulation or hypothalamic dysfunction. Always warrants an evaluation. It could be thyroid, prolactin. It could be just stress, insulin resistance. These things all contribute to abnormal luteal phases. However, it's something that can be easily rectified. Progesterone's not wrong, but improving your ovulation is going to be the key because often you're not developing a good follicle because of this brain ovary disconnect. So 
Number five is going to be, I want you to pay attention to your luteal phase and make sure that you know how long it is. Really track that ovulation and go from there. So hopefully this was a helpful video to help you understand some tips if you are trying to get pregnant and things I want you to pay attention to a little bit earlier. My big thing is if you are not tracking your cycle, why don't you start right now? There's many different ways to do it. You can use ovulation predictor kits, other urinary-based hormone monitoring. You can use apps like Natural Cycles. I connect mine with my Aura Ring to do basal body temperature. You also can check cervical mucus, which is free and easy. Hope this video helped you check out the fertility formula. And as always, you can get more information on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD.